Hey, good morning. Just been sitting here at my table signing all these um, book plates for the graphic novel about the Grateful Dead that I did with Chris Miscavige and uh, getting that stuff done. So, uh, But I wanted to do a video about this this time. Blammo, number 10. Probably the best comic book I ever did. And um, it came out in 2000 and... 18, I think. Same year. A lot, I did a lot of stuff in 2018. Uh, I think um, One Dirty Tree came out. The Fonte Bukowski, um, the final volume of that came out. Um, a sketchbook. Um, another graphic novel about Eugene Depps. It was crazy. I had all this stuff like just like in the pipeline and it all just happened to come out at the same time. But uh, this is the best, the best comic book I ever did. I mean, this is the best single issue of Blammo. Until the next one that I do, <laughs> which I'm thinking a lot about now. But we're just going to talk a little bit about it here. Um, so this was just uh, based off of like an old print that I saw. Uh, that was It's actually a lot different than this image, but I just wanted to do sort of like a Moby Dick style um, cover. Um, so I, I really like it. It's kind of, it's really strange. <laughs> anyway. So letters. Um, I used... It's it's pretty ridiculous. I was I was called out for doing this. I had like a letter by Ivan Brunetti, one by Seth, and one by Chris Ware. It's that's pretty that's pretty stupid. <laughs> but I just couldn't help myself. I had to. Um the Chris the Seth one is really good. It was a really awesome letter I had to print that he sent me all about how like don't you shouldn't worry about um getting trapped into doing the same kind of story with the same characters. Like you shouldn't try and do stuff that you, that it like stretches you artistically or something like if you for some reason keep finding yourself coming back to the same kinds of stories and characters you should just continue to explore that and and don't worry about what people say so i thought that was really great and then this below it here this is um a, um kind of what my life is like honestly it's just uh, just always drawing doesn't matter about holidays maybe that'll change soon i don't know Pre-social media days, just uh, more stories. I, I mean, this is all like kind of true stuff from when I was growing up in Arizona before the internet took over my life. Um, but I just tried to make it fiction. So like none of these characters are really me specifically, but this was my, these were my friends in childhood. Uh, illustration, art going. Um, hmm. Yeah, I you know to be honest with you, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the truth. I thought that this comic book when I was doing it was gonna be the last comic book that I ever did. Um, I was living alone in Columbus, Ohio, and I felt really sick, and I thought I'm gonna die. I, I was like I was losing my mind, and I convinced myself that I was very sick and I was gonna die soon or something, and so I was like, well, I, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna put together like this issue of Blame Up. I want to make sure it's like the best one I ever did. So I, I was like, everything is kind of meaningful. Like this, it, this image is all about um, your life's work being scattered off into the wind and, and really coming to nothing. That's what that's all about. And this is a, a reflection of my early life, my childhood. You know, I, I wanted to get some of those stories in there. And then this right here is a story based on kind of my life in Columbus, Ohio at the time. I was hanging out with Brian Moss, who I, I did a cartoon chat with on this channel. And um, and I wanted to reflect on the very first book I ever did called The Hypo and do a comic about that. It's right here. Um, yeah, so my whole thing was like, I'm going to do a short story about like every every book I've ever done and then just, just do like an autobio uh, comic explaining like an autobiography comic that's about something else, like it has like its own storyline, but it's also reflect like reflects a little bit about something I did before. Because at that time in Columbus, I was just thinking a lot like, I don't know, like I, I it was something it was like kind of the worst time of my life. Um, I was very very much in my own head, and I I just thought like I'm sick, I'm I'm gonna die soon. Like I just felt this grimness around my myself, and I I never I can't really explain it. Like I. Went to doctors and stuff, and they did blood tests. I had, like, high blood pressure, but they didn't say I was going to die, you know? So, in that series of short stories about my books, here's another one. This is the second one I did for St. Cole. This was originally done for this uh, French comics ma magazine or, or French comic book called Bento. 
where it's a, a bunch of artists together. We all just kind of put together one of these issues like once a year usually, maybe twice a year. And so I did St. Cole story for this one. And this was reprinted in the last issue of Now, if you wanted to read it. So, um, yeah, and I was planning on doing like, a, you know, a short story for each one. So I was going to do like a Fonzie Bukowski one. I was going to do a short story for my short story collections. It was this whole thing. But anyway, here it was. And it's, you know, reflecting on like, I for art's sake, the mini comic I just did, it's basically that I'm, I'm going back and thinking a lot about that era so here's a little different version of that comic that I just published recently. It's funny because this actually kind of resembles the woman that I'm with now, Amy, my partner, the angel Amy. <laughs> uh, yeah, more uh, flashbacks. So this Burning Brigsby was going to be a graphic novel. This was going to be the next graphic novel that I did. Um, and I had all these notes planned out and everything for it. This whole crazy story about this artist who's like becomes really popular and then disappears. He doesn't want fame. He just wanted to do his art. And it's about the end of his life and how his children are fighting over his life's work. But since I was crazy and I thought I'm not going to live long enough to do that graphic novel, I just wrote it as a short story instead. And it actually works a lot better as a short story than it would have as a graphic novel if it was all drawn out. But this is the my favorite story. I mean, I, I really love this comic a lot. It's very meaningful to me. Um, just this whole character, which is based off of like kind of Belgian um, uh, like graphic albums. I thought he was like, okay, he's like this author who, who is um, more most famous for like these comics, like these series. It's kind of like a Tintin type character. He goes on adventures and stuff and then he just quits and everybody's like, he's like a J.D. Salinger type. Like, everybody's like, Where, whatever happened to the author? And he won't talk to anybody. And then he dies. And then these are his children fighting over his estate. Like, his son wants to republish all that stuff and get artists to draw new editions and things like that. And she wants it to just be left alone. So, yeah. Great story. And the back cover is the life, just a one, like a summary of how that artist their father became successful. So um, respecting his privacy, I've colored through over, over his face so you don't have to see what he looked like. Another internet, before the internet, the uh, true story. So, all right. This is a, kind of like a, I talk about this in the hypo, that short story. My character finds this book, uh, an Artemis Ward, um, who was like a forgotten humorist. So, like I said, you know, I was thinking a lot, like, what, what happens to me? What happens to all this stuff I've drawn when I'm gone? Like, not, nothing. Like, it's just going to disappear, and I'm going to be forgotten, and it doesn't matter. Like, that I'm even doing any of this stuff. And so I, I wanted to, to draw a story based off an author who actually was like that. This, so here's his book, Artemis Ward. Um, this is the actual book that I took this story from. Uh, it's falling apart. This is an author who's just completely forgotten, but in his time he was pretty well loved. Um, he kind of he was responsible for Mark Twain's first uh, published work, and this is just a, a transcript from one of his stories about traveling to Utah and meeting Mormons. So it had like another personal tie to me. So this was like perfect for me at the time, you know. So I just wanted to do a little homage to somebody who is, his life is almost meaningless at this point. And that's just kind of how it goes. Um, that's me and Amy gathering up uh, Artemis Ward's work after it's been scattered. This is uh, the resolution to all the comics that I did, like One Dirty Tree, the book I did and stuff like that about how, you know, I, I did a lot of comics that were about my dad um, and they were kind of angry and this is a true story. Um, I went to New Jersey and my father was there and we spent some time together and talked for the first time in a long time and uh, that's what this comic is about. And it was kind of like, okay, that's the resolution of that part of my life. It's the end of me and my dad not liking each other, you know. 
Mark Twain talking about Artemis Ward and what this man meant to him. Uh, and then right here, um, it's just the inside back cover where I just kind of cram all sorts of stuff. A little dumb story about my little brother Jonah when we lived together and I ate a whole cherry pie and he said, you're going to take a cherry shit, bro. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Uh, Paul Karasik giving me a, t a tip about how to travel with clothing. <laughs> And yeah, there's that. And the original art, I still have a lot, most of the original artwork for this. I think I have almost all of it, but you can see. I just wanted to show a little bit of that. Here's some of the Artemis Ward pages. Drawn at 11 by 17. Pretty great. I just dug these out for this video. I didn't even know that I still had this stuff, but I do. Pretty great. All right. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Tell your friends. <laughs> all right. See ya.